everyone. Welcome back to Alopecia in Life. This is Christine. Today, I wanted to talk about my experience with doctors, the good and the bad, as a way of showing to you, if you're, if you're questioning, what you should expect from providers and when to walk away, when, I, when I've learned to walk away. And, and if that can help you figure out what you need to do, fantastic. Uh, my first experience with treatment for alopecia came with a doctor in New Hampshire who, after injecting my scalp with at least 20 rounds of steroid injections, told me very bluntly to prepare to lose all my hair. And this was after I had poured my heart and soul into telling him about my problem, how it was so mysterious and strange. I had never gone through anything like this before. I was losing my hair. I was 30. There was no way I could lose my hair. It wasn't going to happen. And I had waited three months for this man's expertise because there was such a long waiting list. And he very bluntly and flatly said, you should prepare to lose all your hair. There's no cure. Um, and looking back, I can understand, you know, there is no cure. That's the reality. Uh, I didn't know that then. Uh, it would have been nice for him to treat me with a little more compassion or it, any compassion would have been better than how he treated me. Um, so after injecting my scalp with several rounds of steroid injections, he told me as I was bawling in his office, could barely see through my tears that I had to leave because there was another patient waiting. And I'll never forget that man for all of the things that he said to me and what he didn't say. And I'll never forget him either because he really stands out as possibly the worst healer I've ever paid money and waited to see. Um, and so I wanted to contrast that with another provider who I have seen for several years. I don't see him anymore. Uh, he practices nutrition response testing and is a Harvard medical trained doctor. So he has the Western uh, tradition um, in his wheelhouse, but he also has several other, I think, more useful in some cases, um, um, treatments up his sleeve. And when I first went into his office, he listened to me. He really understood where I was coming from, not just from a factual standpoint, but also from the emotional um, standpoint that I, that I, all the emotions that I was bringing with me as a patient with alopecia. And this is after having struggled with the, with the disease for at least eight or nine years. And so it, he wasn't the first person I had seen. He wasn't the first person I had spilled my guts to and tried, tried to find a treatment with, but he treated me as though he was the first person I had ever seen. And he made the effort to make a good impression and that he, he backed up what he was telling me with, um, with sound scientific evidence, but also with heart. He, um, just in his willingness to, to listen, to be there, to be present emotionally um, with me as a human being, recognizing me as a, as an emotional whole being who needed help went so far in me feeling as though this problem could be resolved. And even if it couldn't, I was going to be okay. And so I, I highlight these two doctors because, uh, over the course of the 13 years I've been dealing with alopecia, I've um, met several people who fall somewhere along that continuum where they're either complete ogres or they're complete saints. And on the opposite end, on the, the more the ogre side, I um, have developed a real um, maybe ogre, ogre radar uh, for, for these folks who don't have any sense of um, understanding of what it's like to be someone living with alopecia, living with this incurable right now, for now, chronic disease. Um, and I've learned that they're not worth my time because they don't care. Um, and they don't, they don't care enough to do some research. They don't care enough from my experience and from my perspective to take my case and understand it for the, the deeply 
life altering issue that it is and to find a treatment or at least to connect with me on that human level and to say, I'm sorry, I understand what you're going through, but I can't help you. Um, and so it's okay. What I, what I did, um, what I've done several times with certain providers is give them the benefit of the doubt for a little bit, except for that first person I told you about. <laughs> I was, I was one and done with him. Um, I have left after just a few sessions with people. I've also tried to work it out for about three or four months with some doctors and then just ultimately realized that it wasn't, it wasn't going anywhere and they weren't going to understand me. They weren't going to care enough or do enough for me to, um, to help me try to resolve any underlying issues that might be going on with, uh, with this autoimmune disease as it affects me personally. And so uh, it's okay if you're frustrated, it's okay if you're disgusted, it's okay if you're fed up and you're angry. It's totally fine to to uh, to let that let those people know that um, because I think within the medical community there isn't enough understanding and there isn't enough care put into the human element of uh, of disease of, of dealing with this specific disease as well that's so rare and there's there's really no effective treatment for it's okay to let those feelings shine because I think people need to understand what they're not doing and how that's affecting you. And it's okay for you to invest your time and your money elsewhere because there are people out there who care and who have it in them to show them that you get that they that they care. So I hope this helps. Um, please let us know what you think about your um, about what I've said. If you have any positive or ne negative experiences you'd like to share um, along your own journey in resolving alopecia. Please also visit my website at alopecianlife at wordpress.com. Remember to like my page, my YouTube blog, and also please remember that there's a lot of life to live and a lot of love to give, even when you don't have hair. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.